Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakumar. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time and not yet subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that to get notified all my future videos. Having studied all the fundamental concepts that are required to study dynamic force analysis of reciprocating engines such as inertia force, inertia torque, the Allen-Betts principle and so on. It's time now to study dynamic force analysis of reciprocating engines. These are the learning outcomes. If you could be able to watch the video till the end, then you should be able to list various forces acting on an IC engine. And also you should be able to define some terms, namely piston effort, crank pin effort and crank effort. Eventually, the more important the expressions, you should be able to derive them, right? We know that various forces are acting in a reciprocating engine. The two predominant moving parts of a reciprocating engine are piston and the connecting rod. When both have mass and acceleration, they will produce inertia force and inertia torques. Right? We will be considering everything in our dynamic force analysis study. Dynamic force analysis study can be done for the simplicity under two cases. In the first case, I assume that the weight and the ends, the inertia effect due to the connecting rod are not considered or ignored. In the case two, in addition to the mass and inertia effect due to the piston, we are also going to consider weight and inertia effect due to the connecting rod also. We are going to consider that. That is case two. These are the two cases under which we can start presenting dynamic force analysis problem. If you ask me about the solution method broadly, there are two methods available. One is graphical method. The other one is analytical method. What we are going to do in this video is we are going to consider case one, which will be solved by analytical method. I mean to say that we are going to talk about force analysis of reciprocating engine neglecting the weight and inertia of the connecting rod and we are going to solve the problem by analytical method is that clear we know that any accelerating body will have a inertia force to determine inertia force we need the acceleration of the piston for that we have already derived equation for acceleration of piston in our previous video. These are the notations that we are going to use even in this video. With all these notations, we could be able to summarize these kinematic characteristics of IC engines. This is the displacement of piston formula for you. Velocity of piston formula. The most important for us in this analysis is acceleration of the piston which we are going to use in order to find inertia force of the piston. Then other two, namely angular velocity and angular acceleration of the connecting rod may not be required now because we have neglected its effect in this case. Are you ready to derive all the expressions of various forces acting on an IC engine? Let's proceed. Right, uh, so we will do the a configuration diagram of an IC engine, right? Okay. So let us draw the line of stroke. So arbitrarily, let us draw a crank and connecting rod. Let this be O. Let's see, Let's, let it be P. So this is the configuration diagram of 
a reciprocating engine. Shall we see uh, what are the various forces acting on them? Yes. There is a force exerted by the gas on the piston head, which we call it as FL. So we need to understand that in a horizontal IC engine, when the piston moves from inner dead center to outer dead center, we call it as a stroke, right? So to move from IDC to ODC, the crank should have moved from zero degree to 180 degree. So during the first half of the stroke, piston will be accelerating 0 to 180 degree. Then from 180 degree to 360 degree, during the second half of the stroke, piston will be moving from outer dead center to inner dead center. We call it as retardation. Now, when the piston accelerates, then we will have inertia force, which is equal to M into A, which will be acting in the opposite direction to that of the acceleration of the motion. This force, we call it as inertia force, F5. And additionally, if you can assume frictional force, that will act in the opposite direction to of the piston motion. So what I'm showing here for acceleration position, the other forces acting on the piston or weight of the piston, which will be acting downwards. Because of its weight, the cylinder walls will exert thrust normal reaction on the piston. So I could draw them here in the opposite direction. One is weight of the reciprocating parts, mass of the piston multiplied by G. This one I call it as normal reaction. So now as you could see this all the horizontal components can be summed into one component we call it as piston effort. The horizontal forces acting along the line of stroke can be summed vectorially to get the effective horizontal force which we use the term piston effort. Once we know the piston effort horizontally then that horizontal force will be transferred along the connecting rod which we call it as FQ. Force acting along connecting rod is FQ. This FQ can be resolved into two components. One is perpendicular to the crank. Another one is parallel to the crank. We call perpendicular to the crank as cramping effort. We call the component which is parallel to the crank by notation thrust acting on the bearing FB. Of course, this is FQ. So these are the various forces acting in an IC engine, in a reciprocating engine. Is that clear? So these are the various force components acting on an IC engine. So as I said, these are the notations that are going to be used in this derivation. What we have to determine? Yes, these are the force components that we are going to derive now we will first go to piston effort. So what is piston effort? On the piston there are many forces acting horizontally along the line of stroke. What is the net force? That net force we are giving a new term that is F suffix P which is nothing but piston effort. Piston effort Fp is equal to, we have net load acting on the piston, that means load given by the gas pressure, then the opposite direction, we will be having the inertia force of the piston, right? If piston accelerates towards the right, inertia force will be acting towards left. If you consider additionally frictional force, 
always frictional force will be acting in the opposite direction of the piston. So the equation would be this. This is during accelerated motion. What will happen to the piston during retardation? Let us see. This is the piston. Of course, FL will be acting here. This is the direction of acceleration. Inertia force also will be acting in this side. Frictional force also will be opposing. So that means all three forces are acting towards x axis. This equation, right? So what we have derived is for horizontal IC engine. How it would change if it is a vertical IC engine? For vertical engine, FL will be acting downwards. During acceleration, piston will move from TDC to BDC. Therefore, inertia force will be acting in the opposite direction. And if you consider frictional force, that also will be opposing. But additionally, we will be having one more. What is that? Weight of the piston which will be acting downwards. This is the equation during acceleration. What about retardation motion? Retardation. FL will be acting downwards. Piston will be moving upward and hence inertia force will be in the opposite direction. Frictional force again, whether it is in retardation or acceleration, the weight will be acting downwards. This is during retardation. Can you understand now? So in a vertical IC engine, we have one more extra component that W equal to mg will be acting downwards. That's need to be taken into account. It's fine. How to find formula for net load acting on the piston? The pressure inside the engine is P. Cross-sectional area of the piston is A. If we know the bow of the piston, we can find area of the cross-section. Am I right? So FL is equal to pressure of the gas exerted inside the engine cylinder multiplied by area of cross-section. So this is the formula to find the FL for single acting single cylinder engine. Sometimes if in your problem it is mentioned as double acting single cylinder engine, how the formula would change. In this case, the double acting cylinder Pressure will be acting on both sides, cover side and the crank side. So what I will consider this pressure, let me consider as P1, this side pressure, let me consider as P2. And you know that this cross section area of the piston as A, the diameter is D, right? Here, let me consider the piston rod will have smaller dia, small d. In that case, it will have area of cross section of 5 by 4 d square, which I may call it as small letter a. Is that clear, the difference between them? So that is the formula to find net load acting on the piston. So now let us determine inertia force of the piston. We know that inertia force is equal to Ma, mass of the reciprocating parts multiplied by acceleration of the reciprocating parts, which is nothing but acceleration of the piston. We already know the formula for acceleration of piston. There you are. We got the equation for inertia force also. So now we could easily determine piston effort. So we got piston effort now, right? We will move on to next force. Now let us find force acting along connecting rod, which I call it as FQ, right? Let me draw a line perpendicular to this. From the right angle triangle PCD, knowing the value of piston effort, we can find the other two components namely FQ and this vertical component which is nothing but FN. 
So from this, I can write cos phi is equal to Fp by Fq. But I need to determine Fq. Fq is equal to Fp by cos phi. Okay, the third one is thrust on the cylinder walls, also known as normal reaction on the guide bars. We call it as Fn. So from right angle triangle, knowing the piston effort Fp, one can find normal reaction easily. Normal reaction Fn, so Fp into tan phi. Right, the next component will be cramping effort. This FQ acting along the connecting rod can be resolved into two components. One is perpendicular to the crank, which we call it as FT. Since it is acting at the crank pin, this force is also known as crank pin effort. The other component is parallel to the crank. Now from O, let me draw a perpendicular small trigonometry we need to do here, okay? When this is theta, this must be 90 minus theta. Now take this triangle OMP. Knowing this phi, this is 90. Can you tell what could be this angle? 90 degree minus phi. Now take this triangle OMC. This is 90 minus theta. This is 90 minus phi. What could be this angle? You know, sum of this three angle equal to 180 degree. So I will get theta plus phi. So we have got this angle, theta plus phi. Now this will be 90 degree minus theta plus phi. So knowing the FQ, how can I find the FT? Right? We know that cos 90 minus theta equal to sine. So this will become sine theta plus phi is equal to Ft by Fq. So further processing, I will get Ft is equal to Fq multiplied by sine of theta plus phi. This is the force component perpendicular to the crank. Right. The next component will be thrust acting on the crankshaft bearing. You see the arrow mark. It is acting towards the crank. That force, in fact, will be acting on the crankshaft bearing. How can I find it? Again, we can get it from the same right angle triangle there. We can get the answer for FB. So I could write now opposite side this time FB divided by hypotenuse FQ. So from that sine 90 minus theta you know that that is cos theta. There you are. This is the formula to find thrust acting on the crankshaft bearing FB. If finally we have to find turning movement on the crankshaft, which we call it as a torque, which we also known as crank effort T. In fact, the FT is the important fellow. The FT, which acts perpendicular to the crank, is the one which makes the crank to turn, which makes the crank to rotate. You know, the formula to find turning movement or torque is nothing but force applied multiplied by perpendicular distance between the moment center and the line of action of the force. In this case, R is the crank radius. Ft is the force acting at the crank pin, perpendicular force. So Ft multiplied by R, we will get the required turning moment T. After many simplification, I will get the turning moment equation in terms of theta, right?
this equation without which you can solve the problem but this will be the starting point while flywheels concept that's why i have brought in here right so these are the various forces acting on ic engine that's it hope you find this very useful if it helps please share among your friends see you in the next video take care bye thank you